Hi, my name is Audra Wilson Russell. I'm the owner of White CPA Firm, and today we're talking about the filing requirements for Form 1099 Miscellaneous, as well as the new 1099 NEC. Okay, let's jump right into it. Beginning your tax year 2020, businesses are now required to file non-employee compensations on Form 1099 NEC. They are no longer reporting those payments on 1099 miscellaneous. And this is what you, this is the new 1099 miscellaneous. As you can see, box seven no longer has the non-employee compensation. Businesses will now report that on 1099 NEC. And this is the new form, again, starting with tax year 2020. And they will report those amounts in box one of this form. So who must file a 1099 miscellaneous? If you paid more than $10 in royalties or at least $600 in rents, prizes, awards, other income, medical and healthcare payments, payments to attorneys, and we'll speak more about the attorneys. Those um, types of payments are still reported on 1099 miscellaneous. Again, this is only for payments made in the course in the uh, trade of business, right? So if these, these are not including personal payments. This is just through the course of a trade or a business. So now the new 1099 NEC, uh, you would file this on behalf of businesses that you paid at least $600 for services performed by someone who is not your employee. So non-employee um, non compensation and any cash payments for fish, which is kind of weird, but okay. For fish, you purchase from anyone engaged in that trade or business or payments to an attorney. And we'll talk about that again for each person for whom you have withheld any federal income taxes you would need to report that on a 1099 nec as well regardless of if you paid them the 600 dollars threshold amount or not so if you withheld any um money then you would need to file that on a 1099 nec okay moving on to the next there are exceptions to what types of entities you would file these 1099s for um, for corporations you would not issue them a form 1099 so that includes s corporations c corporations nonprofits, any um, incorporated businesses for your schedule c filers like your individuals your sole props your dbas you will need to issue them a form 1099 so payments that are paid to a corporation, um, let's see, even though they are a corporation, they still may need a 1099. And that includes businesses like medical and healthcare payments, gross proceeds paid to an attorney, and substitute payments in lieu of dividends or tax exempt interest. The following payments made to corporations generally must be filed on the 1099 NEC. And those again, like I said, the fish purchases, attorney fees, and payments by a federal executive agency for services. So let's talk about payments that are paid to attorneys. If it is gross proceeds, so let's say it's from a lawsuit, an installment agreement, or, or you're paying the attorney, the the fee on behalf of their client then you are to issue that attorney the 1099 miscellaneous in box 10. if you are a business and you're paying for legal services then you're to issue the amount of services in box one on the new 1099 nec so let's talk about the 1099k the 1099k are for payments made with a credit card and normally the credit card 
processor is the one who would issue that 1099k to the business owner and the the business who paid the other business owner will not need to file that on a 1099 NEC. So the types of payments that are reportable on the new 1099 NEC would be things like cash, checks, ACH, or money sharing apps such as Zelle or Venmo. So again, if you pay by credit card, PayPal for business, cash app for business, any um, credit card processor, then that credit card processor will issue that business at 1099k so the filing due dates for the 1099 miscellaneous it's due by february 28th of the following year if you're filing by paper and march 31st if you're filing electronically it's still due to the payee by january 31st the new 1099 NEC is due January 31st, regardless if you file by paper or electronically. The penalty for late filing or late furnishing after that 30 day grace period is $50 per return up to $565,000. There's also an additional penalty called failure to file a correct information return. And like I said, this could be in addition to the uh, late filing penalty. These are two separate penalties. So you definitely wanna make sure you're filing the correct form and that you're filing that form timely. If you need any assistance in filing these 1099s at the beginning of the tax year, definitely reach out to us here at Watt CPA. That is something that we can help you with, with um, getting those 1099s filed in a timely manner. And of course, connect with us. We're everywhere, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, on our website. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel.